Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are on page number 90. And today is our lesson number 143. The series began with day 101 and today is our 43rd lesson. If you're interested in solving, getting some more practice, if you're interested in solving the problems that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition, where does it say right here, the version 5, the fifth edition, the book that I'm holding in my hand, you will find that we have solved every single problem that, appears in the pre, uh, that appeared in the previous edition of the T's and you will find the solutions to those problems from day number 1 through 80. Just type in T's day 1 and the new series for 6th edition begins on day number 101. Let's take a look at it. Today we'll talk about the difference between the concept of co covariance and dependence. What does it mean when somebody claims uh, that the, this variable is dependent on the other as opposed to simply saying that there is a covariance, a positive covariance or a negative covariance? What does it mean? Well, how do these two concepts differ? Let's start by talk by the, by means of an example. Uh, the example, an example that you see uh, right in the middle of page number ninety. It's in the black. Uh, in, it's, in, it's in a gray box. There. It says, "I'm going to read to you verbatim. I'm, I'm not going to write it on the blackboard. I'm just going to read to you verbatim." Page ninety. Turn to page ninety. Make sure you. It's important that you have the book in front of you. Read it with me. Okay, here we go. The, the, the box that appears right in the middle of the page in gray box, it says, I only listen to the radio when I drive my car. In other words, the person never listens to the radio at all unless she's in her car driving her car. I only listen to the radio when I drive my car. And when I drive, I always listen to the radio. In other words, if she's driving, there is never ever a situation when she's driving and the radio is not on. And there never ever a situation where the radio is on and she is not driving. One more time, it says, she does her habit. I only listen to the radio when I drive my car. And when I drive my car, I always listen to the radio. What do we, con what do we conclude from that? It goes on to say, as the mileage on my car increases, my radio listening time also increases. As the mileage, it says, As, as as I drive more, as as you drive more, the mileage on the car, of course, is going to go on because you're going to put more miles on it as you as you drive more. But your listening time, your time that you listen time. listening to the radio let's represent with letter T also goes up and let's represent the mileage with letter M so what we find here in this scenario is that as the variable M goes up as the value of M goes up which represents the mileage so does T so does so does T or if you like, as T goes up, as the amount of time that you accumulate listening to the radio goes up, so does M. They move in the same direction. They move in the same direction. So if you had kept a log of the number of hours that you have listened to radios and each, cor each corresponding hour you have a mileage. At the end of three hours of listening to radio, the mileage on my car was this. By the time I li finished listening to radio seven and a half hours, the mileage on my car was this. By the time I finished, when I, when I had listened to radio only two hours, the mileage on my car was this. I had the car now for so many years. I have listened to my radio 3,207 hours and my mileage, mileage on my car is 233,000 miles. Do you get the idea? You have a log of, of miles of the hours hours on one column 
that you have listened to radio and the, and the mileage on the car. And they both move in the same direction. Higher the reading for the uh, of, of number of hours for the radio, higher the mileage on the car. Lower the reading on the or lower lower reading on, of of a uh, radio listening hours will indicate lower mileage. Does that mean? Does that mean that one is causing the other? It's a ridiculous example. It's still the example. I agree with you, but that is all the that is that is the whole point here. The whole point here is that listening, looking at keeping track of the number of hours that you listen to the radio. Given the fact that you only listen to radio when you're driving and you, when you're driving you always have the radio on. If that's the case and if you had kept track of the number of hours that you listen to radio and number of miles for each number of given hours of radio listening that you have done, if you have the record, would it be correct to say that one is causing the other? Does the number of miles that you put in the car, does the number of miles, which is M here, does M depend on T? In other words, would it be okay if somebody, if, if, if somebody asked you, if, if you were to walk up to somebody and say, uh, uh, how many miles do you have in your, on your uh, how many miles do you have on your car, that person would say, let me, let, give me a second, let me check how many hours they've been listening to the radio. Of course not. The number of miles that one puts on the car has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with how many hours you have listened to radio. Number of mileage, mileage, mileage on the car does not depend. Does not. Does does the M depend on M? T? The answer is no. Does 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 T depend on M? Does the number of hours that you listen to radio? depend on how many miles you have driven? The answer is no. It's just that the person has that habit of listening to radio while she's driving and when she's driving she always listens to radio but that does not mean that one variable is causing the other. There is no dependence here. But there is this observation that we see that they move in the same direction. They vary together. Listen to me. They vary they, they change in the value together. Vary means to change. And here. Vary means to change. And they change together. There seems to be a covariance. There seems to be covariance. They change together. There is a covariance. And in this case, the covariance happens to be positive. They move in the same direction. There is a positive covariance. But that does not necessarily mean that one depends on the other. It could, it could turn out that one variable actually is dependent on the other. That could be the case sometime. But that does not necessarily mean that one depends on the other. One more time. There is, there is, a, there, there, there is definitely an observation where value of one goes up, the value of the other one goes up and, and vice versa. When this value of one goes down, the other value of the other one goes down as well. They move in the same direction. Moving in the same direction means they have positive covariance. They seem to vary together. But covariance does not indicate dependence. Covariance covariance this, this symbol means implies. Covariance does not imply dependence. Here, is a co here we see covariance, but no dependence. One does not depend on the other. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at one more example. Let's see what happens. Now the two variables that we look that we will look at are the two variables that we will look at are oil prices, oil price, let's call it P. And what we observe is that as oil price goes up, in, as the oil price goes up in the oil market, what we generally observe is that the stock market index, the stock market index or some people simply call it as, they, they leave out the word index, they just say stock market. 
as oil prices goes up, the stock market goes down. Stock market ten, tends to tends to perform poorly on on the days when the oil prices go up, and vice versa. When the oil prices go down, that's good news for the economy, because the economy runs on the energy. If the energy is cheap, that's good news. We can produce things at a lower cost. Our profits will be stronger because we are paying less for the energy. So what we observe here is that as 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 P goes up, which is the price of the oil, the index, let's call it I, I for index, I goes down. Or as P goes, as price of oil goes down, the index goes up. They seem to move in the opposite direction. They move in the opposite direction but they do but they do vary together they do move together we cannot say the the uh, we're not looking at the amount of rainfall uh, the, that we had in a given month and uh, and and how many rabbits I saw in my backyard or how much ice cream I ate in that month it'll be random whatever we see there is gonna be random here is not random they definitely are moving together not in the same direction in the opposite direction but there, there seems to be something going on here there, there seems to be a tango between the two variables they seem to be dancing when one goes up the other one goes down they move in the opposite direction they, therefore we say they have negative covariance now the next question is one dependent on the other just because they have covariance does not imply does not imply dependence does not necessarily imply does not necessarily imply it could covariance does not necessarily covariance does does not necessarily I shouldn't have started this thing because I don't know how to spell necessarily That does not necessarily imply dependence. And the operative word here, the word that qualifies this statement, is this word necessarily. We are not saying we are not saying that covariant does not imply does not imply it should say imply here. We are not saying covariance does not imply dependence. We are saying covariance. Let me erase all of the other stuff here so that it doesn't get too crowded. You see, we are not saying covariance does not imply dependence. That would be wrong. What we are saying is that covariance does not necessarily imply dependence. It does not necessarily imply dependence. Dependence might be there, dependence may not be there. Is there any dependence here between the oil, or price of oil and the stock market? The answer is yes. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, Dow Jones Industrial Average, I don't want to go this, into this thing because we are not here to learn about Dow Jones, the stock market. The stock market index does depend on oil price. So here, I is it? Uh, I depends. I depends on P. Now, when we say this index, the stock market index depends on oil price. Again, it does not mean that it depends. We it does. We we are not claiming that the stock market index depends solely on the price of oil. The stock market index is driven by many, many different factors in the economy. And one of those factors, very important factor, is the price of energy, price of oil. So it does depend, this, the, how the stock market is going to perform in a given year does very much depend on how expensive or how cheap the oil was in that year. But that is not the only factor, but it does depend on it. So here, not only we have negative covariance, but one is dependent on the other. Since one is dependent on the other, we could actually show them in the graph. We can put one variable on x-axis, one variable on y-axis. Which variable is going to go on the x-axis and which variable is going to go on the y-axis here? Well, on x-axis, we put independent variable. And here, we put dependent variable. Which one is independent variable and which one is dependent variable? Why, well, right here, it says, it says right here, index market, the value of the index market, index market index, 
uh, it's rather stock market index stock market index that's what i is the stock market index depends depends on oil it is the i it is the i that depends i is the dependent variable i is going to go on the vertical axis and what is driving the price of oil what is well, rather what is driving the uh, index what is driving the value of this in, uh, stock market index is the price of oil that is your that is your independent variable because it's the price of oil that drives the stock market the stock market depends depends on oil therefore stock market is the dependent variable price of oil is the independent variable let's do one more let's do one more This example, this example is actually not in the book. The example that we just finished, example that we just finished, I forgot to tell you, was from the bottom of page 90. This next one that we're going to do is not in the book. This is, there's the example, not in the book. The more I study, the more I study, which, which we're going to measure in terms of hours of study, with the letter H, you're going to keep track of how many hours, how, how many hours we do of study every day, and how many hours of study we have done in every week. And we're going to have a data set. We're going to keep a log. Of course, that's the only way you can collect the uh, observations. So we're going to have a log where we're just going to say how many hours I study each week. The more hour, the more I study, which we're going to measure by hours spent per week studying. Hours, hours spent. hours spent per week studying we're going to represent with letter H so that's your one variable the more I study better grade better grades I get which we're going to measure with the GPA and we're going to represent that with letter G here we can clearly see, here we can clearly see, here we can clearly see that the GPA, my grades, depend, my GPA depends on the number of hours of study I do. Since GPA, it is the GPA that depends, G, my grade, is the dependent variable. And the number of hours of study I do is independent variable. Do you understand? And what sort of various, what sort of covariance do they have? Well, as as the number of hours study that I do goes up, my G, my grade go up, and vice versa. And vice versa. As the fewer the hour, fewer the hours I study per week, the less I study per week. The lower, lower my grades are going to get. The lower the GPA I'm going to have in the, in the in the semester. They have a positive covariance. They have a positive covariance. They have a positive covariance, but here they also have a relationship where one actually turns out to be dependent on the other. So one more time. Covariance does not mean dependence, does not necessarily mean dependence. You must always qualify that statement. You have to be careful by inserting that qualification there. And if you don't know what it means to qualify something, learn this word, qualify, as, as the meaning that I'm using right now. I'm going to tell you exactly where to go to learn this word so that you know how to use this thing uh, properly yourself. Well, I don't have it with me. In the next video, I'm going to tell you which day to watch. I'm going to tell you which vocabulary video you need to watch to learn how to use the word qualify properly in the context. To qualify in a statement means to put a condition on it, to put a restriction on it, to, to restrict it. You must qualify your statement by saying not necessarily. Covariance, it, it, one more time, it is not correct to say covariance does not imply dependence. 
You have to say, because that's an absolute statement that will be wrong. You would say covariance does not necessarily imply dependence. There could be dependence somewhere, but covariance does not actually mean that they are dependent. Here they are, dip one is dependent on the other, and they move in the same direction. Since they move in the same direction, therefore we said they have positive covariance, and they have dependence. One depends on the other. Before I close the video, before I close the video, let's do one last problem. One last problem. So you're going to have several different varieties of the, of, of the taste here to see what it means to have covariance and what it means to have dependence. This problem that we're going to do, as I said, this is the last one, is on page number 91. On page 91 is the practice problem number one. Let's take a look at it. It's a funny one. It's a silly question. You read it yourself. The book is in front of you. You read it yourself. Let's see if I can read this, this verbatim. It says, during the 20th century, the economists noticed a relationship between the length of the women's skirt, interesting, and the stock market index. They go on to say, that as, this, as the length of the skirts became shorter, as women began to wear shorter skirts, the stock market index tend to go up. Strange. And as the hemline fell, as the hemline fell, as as in as the length of the skirts began longer, if as, as as the women began to wear longer skirts, so did the stock market. As the length, uh, as the length, what they were trying to say is that as the length of the skirt went up, stock market went down. Because they're talking about hemline falling. It's the language that tra that's tricky. Because here, falling hemline means longer skirts. So when the skirts are longer, the stock market goes down. When the skirts are shorter, the stock market goes up. That's, that's what the economists observe. If they go on to say, no one means to suggest that one caused the other. That would be absolutely silly to say that the, the stock market index, how well the stock market is doing, if you want to see that, if you want to know how well the stock market is doing, you start measuring the length of skirts in your office and you'll know. That'll be silly. Not only it'll be silly, but that'll be a damn good way to have a sexual lawsuit harassment on your hand. Let's continue reading. Certainly, changing fashions are not the cause of the volatility of the stock market. Even though there seems even though there is not a casual relationship, the parameter follows the same general lines. It says, based on what we just read here, which of the following best describes the relationship? Well, let's talk about it, shall we? Based on what we just read, what based, on, based on what we just read, this is what we found out. We found out that as the length of the skirts became shorter, this represent the length. This represent the length of the skirt with with the letter L. In other words, if they became shorter, that means as L went down, as L goes down, the stock market. This represent the letter I. I goes up. The longer. Or became shorter. That's right. The shorter, short. Don't get confused. I said it's the language that that that's important. Getting shorter means the length is going down of the skirt. But in, in the way he wrote it, he will talk about hemlines going up. If hemlines are going up, that's the same as saying this, the length, the skirts are getting shorter. L is going down. Okay. One more time, hemline going up is the same as saying the length is going down. Because that's how the hemlines go up, because the, start, because the skirts are getting shorter. So what we observe here is that when the length is getting shorter, the length are getting shorter, the skirts are getting shorter, the stock market tends to boom. Similarly, when if you collect the historical data on the length of the skirts over the years, for different decades and different times, what you will observe is that the times when the fashion was such that women were wearing longer skirts, the stock market tend to go down. In those times, the stock market poured perform poorly. As you can see, they move in the opposite direction. They move in the opposite direction. They move 
in the opposite direction. We would say that they have they have negative covariance. But it would be absolutely bonkers to suggest that one depends on the other. One does not depend on the other. There is no dependent. Here we cannot claim, let me, let me write on the top here. This is a continuation, continuation of the same problem, but here we cannot, we cannot claim that one is dependent on the other. One is dependent on the other. Even See, we didn't even specify the variables. Either one, it doesn't matter. We, it would be absolutely bonkers to suggest that a lady is going to decide how long or a short of a skirt she's going to wear by turning the television on and seeing how the stock market is doing. No. The length of the skirt does not depend on the stock market performance, nor are the people on the Wall Street are going to decide whether to sell their stocks or buy more stocks based on the length of the skirts that they observed that morning uh, uh, on the ladies. It will be absolutely bonkers. It's silly. It's just a fluke. It's just a fluke that they tend to move in the opposite direction. There definitely seems to be a negative covariance, but one does not depend on the other. As we said before several times, covariance does not imply dependence. Covariance does not necessarily apply, imply dependence. That was the end of it. Tomorrow, so that was problem number one. Tomorrow we'll come and finish, uh, finish this page, page 91, by doing problem two and three. Okay? Bye now.